Hey everyone, welcome back. And yes, I know this is not one of tanks. <laughs> uh, this is, well, as you can see, Diablo 3. Um, but it's been way too long since I put a video up on YouTube. Well, well pretty much I took, the, as most of you remember, I took three weeks of vacation. And when I got back, uh, the, uh, yeah, a lot of other games caught my attention. Tom Clancy and two games in particular I spent a lot of time in is well Tom Clancy's The Division and then of course this one Diablo 3 um, and I thought you know what fuck let's gamble let's just make a quick check in and let's actually talk about why my channel has been quiet for such a long time now I don't know if anybody here is interested in Diablo 3, but well, here goes nothing. So, yeah, without further ado, start a game. I'm just quickly going to showcase you exactly my monk and, yeah, my monk, and exactly what my build is like and what you can experience in Diablo 3 from when they started, from when Diablo 3 was launched and where it is now, because let's face it, when Blizzard launched Diablo 3, and don't get me wrong, I still think and I still stand by the opinion that the best Diablo game that Blizzard have ever made is Diablo 2. Diablo 3 was, well, without stepping any over any Blizzard employees' toes, they failed at the start of Diablo 3. Basically, the gap between the different difficulties, like the gap between normal and hard, was way too big. Um, the storyline was too short. There was a lot of problems back in the day, but Blizzard have actually listened to the community in Diablo 3 and they have actually fixed a fuck ton of things in Diablo 3 and now it's actually back to being a very good game. Still not as good as Diablo 3, uh, no, 2, but it's actually a pretty good game and yeah when I started playing this I got bitten by the disease commonly known in the gaming community as grinding. Which, and we all know that this disease has caused death in the world. It, people have lost their jobs, girlfriends, boyfriends. <sighs> pretty, yeah, <laughs> pretty much what some of the worst things that can actually happen. And, well, to be fair, when you start grinding, you got two... You got two levels of emotions of grinding. Let's take the bad one first. First of all, grinding can can, bah, can be as frustrating uh, as a girl on with PMS. On the other hand, grinding can be as satisfying and enjoyable as a uh, pie that is stuffed with cheese and sausage and small bits of bacon and then wrapped and covered in slices of bacon and baked in the oven. You got pretty much those two levels of emotion and there's nothing between that. Grinding... yeah. It has its good sides and it has its yeah, downsides. But without further ado, say hello to my monk who do it again. Which, a couple of days ago, I actually achieved to get the last piece of that build I needed. Well, to be fair, I got the pieces I need. I Now I'm grinding for the upgraded versions. Because grinding never ends. We all know this in World of Tanks, in World of Warcraft. Pretty much any game that involves grinding. Whatever, it's a gun, engine, gear you name it. 
So, yep. <laughs> There's not much else to say, but... Then... Diablo 3 has taken a lot of my time. Uh, but to be fair, it's actually a good game after all. The graphics are nice. Uh, Storyline is... Meh. To be fair, if you experienced in Diablo or any RPG game, you can complete the storyline within a day. And you don't even rush it. Uh, it's pretty much that short, sadly. Um, but of course there is also a lot of other things in Diablo, like, as we can see, there's adventure mode where you run around in the different sadly only five acts and hunt bounties like let's see I'm here so there's a bounty on a bounty called Blaze of Glory there's a bounty that's called Clear the Forward Barracks and of course you can see here then the rewards they change uh, due to the fact of what type of difficulty you're playing on right now I'm playing on the highest difficulty as you can see up here torment 10 which is this, which is the highest and hardest um, difficulty there is in Diablo. But of course, uh, Torment 10 is also very, very rewarding. Like the XP boost is on 2000%, the gold boost is on 3300%, I believe that something is. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure yet you can correct me in the comments down below. But if you're interested in starting up in Diablo, I could actually showcase you my monk and what an what an exceptional good uh, starter build uh, for a monk is. And this build will work whether you are in Paragon 100 and or 300 or almost 500 as me or even higher. Of course, the higher the Paragon level, uh, to be fair, this is the Paragon level. Every time you max up your Paragon level, your Paragon level starts at... When you reach level 70, then your Paragon level starts. And every time you gain a level in Paragon, you get a point where you can put... Well, the first point is going to be right here, pretty much your main stats. Uh, second level it's here and third level a point here fourth level a point here and then it starts all over all over again as you can see there's tons of ways to make your character stronger um, which is a nice feature but well further ado let's look into my build a starter build which uh, to be fair I I watched another YouTuber uh, with this build and he put it on Tom and H, which is two levels below this and he didn't know if it was recommended or was doable for Tom and 10. I can confirm that it works. <laughs> Let's just put it at that. Yeah, it works. Like, it really, really works. Some people say that maybe this build is one of the weakest ones, but this build nukes enemies. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at my builds. Now I'm running with one of well, one of the most powerful sets in the game for monks. What well, it used to be one of the most powerful sets to monks. Don't know if it's that anymore. I can't carve. I can't find any information of it, but. It's still pretty damn powerful. It's called the Sunvuku, which is a complete armor set based on monks. And as you can see, you more s the more items you get, um, or set items, all the way up down to six, you get a what's a, a boost, which you can see here. I got five pieces, but I got the sixth boost set. I'm going back. I'm coming back to why I get all the six I got all the set boosts but I only have five pieces but mostly this build is 
how should I put it? It's more or less like high burst damage glass cannon. It's more or less. It's based on the ability that Monk that has. It's called Wave of Light, which pretty much, as you can see here, actually, just a big belt drops from the sky and yeah, nukes anything <laughs> that's in its path. Um, I can actually showcase you my skills right here. So my my biggest damage skill or my main damage skill is Wave of Light. As you can see, it has a room in it that's called Explosive Light. Releases burst of energy that deals 830% weapon damage as fire to nearby enemies. And the Wave of Light already does 835 damage. And secondary is Dashing Strike to move up to 50 yards, striking enemies along the way for 370 weapon damage. As holy, that's not something I'm using. I'm only using this to move around fast on the map. And of course I get a, I got a rune in that says gain 20% increased movement speed for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. I got a Mystic Ally. Uh, a Fire Ally, I would say. Um, for this build you have two options. You can, work if you can go with the Fire Ally. If you have no problem keeping your Spirit up because you're going to use spirit every time you burn that bell. Um, but if you have no problem keeping your spirit up, I would recommend you go with the fire ally. Uh, your mystic ally splits into five small allies that explodes for 480 weapon damage as fire. The passive ability of a mystic fire ally is it increases your damage by 10%. Now I got two of those, so that's 20% increased damage. If you have problems keeping your spirit up every time you burn that bell, you should go for the air ally. A mystic ally fights by your side that increases your spirit regeneration by 4. Now, there is a... There is a... There is a... An item of boots that makes you allow... That allows you to summon two mystic allies, so you can actually double that up to 8 in spirit regeneration. Uh, I got Sweeping Winds, which surround yourself in a vortex that continuously deals 8, uh, 145 percent weapon damage to all enemies within 10 yards. That's not something I'm going to use at all. I'm going to, however, I'm going to use the last bit of it of the Sweeping Wind. As you can see, landing a critical hit has a chance to increase the vortex effect up to three stacks for a total of 435 weapon damage. Which increases my damage when I'm throwing that bell down. Then I have Epiphany, which increases my spirit regeneration per second by 20 and enables your melee attacks to instantly dash to a target for 15 seconds. Yes, that's. But I'm using that for spirit regeneration. Also, it's. When I pop it, it's infused myself with sand, reducing damage taken by 50% because of the rune uh, Desert Shroud. A mantra or a buff that's on always is mantra of conviction. Damage bonus is increased to 20% for th 3 seconds. That's when I pop it. Passive it's enemies within 30 yards of you take 10% increased damage. Killing an enemy that's affected by a mantra of conviction grants you and your allies 30% increased movement speed for 3 seconds. Again, movement speed is pretty much what this build is all about. This build is... Well, how should I put it? It's a hybrid build, so you can pretty much use it whatever you want, but the main focus of this is speed rifting, as it's called in Diablo 3, and I'm going to showcase, I'm going to show you uh, what a uh, rift run is, but I'm not going to speed run it. Not on T10, I'm not, I'm not that strong enough, uh, pretty much because elites and rare monsters is taking a bit too long to kill. And of course you get four p you also get four passive skills as you can use when you reach level 70 of course uh, which of course sees the initiative which dealing damage to enemies above 75 percent life increases your attack speed by 30 percent which is a huge damage buff exalt soul to increase your spirits by 50 and increase your spirit regeneration by four every second momentum 
Uh, moving 25 yards, increase your damage by 20% for 6 seconds, so already there. On those two, that's 50% increased damage. And Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistance from items instead increases your resistance to all. So the highest amount of resistance I have on, let's say, fire. It equals out to every every resistance I have of elements, like if it's fire or arcane or lightning, all that. Now, the build itself. As you can see, I only got five pieces of Sunmuku and that's what you should be running with. I know this is not my final build. I need to upgrade. I need to find the upgraded version of all this, which is known as an ancient legendary or an ancient set item, which is pretty much this item just more powerful. For this build, you are not going to use the Sumuku's crown or the headpiece because there's another headpiece that is way better than. Sumukus, pretty much because it's gonna come into the effect. As you can see, I'm going with the sixth, uh, the sixth bonus set. Um, Wave of Light consumes a stack of sweeping wind to deal 1,500% increased damage. That's a fuck ton of damage. And this is pretty much what this build is all about. That is that Wave of Light explosion on nuke you might add. Um, for the weapon I'm running with is the Incense Torch of the Grand Temple. Uh, reduces, and I'm pretty much going for the May or the the orange text as you can see. Reduces the spirit cost of Wave of Light by 43%. As you can see, when I pop it, I barely, barely use any spirit. Uh, my boots, and this is th these are the boots that you should be grinding out if you are into Diablo. Uh, boots are called the crudest boots. Um, the orange text is, of course, again, this is what I'm going for. Mystic Ally summons two Mystic Allies that fight by your side. What it doesn't say, and, and but what it does, is that it doubles up your allies, Mystic Allies' ability. As I said, Air Ally, the Spirit Regeneration is double up from 4 to 8. And the Fire Ally is, at, instead of 10% increased damage, it's 20. Uh, belt is the... I would recommend that you go with this. The the Karushiro's... Blah! That's a hard word. Uh, soul. And pretty much because... The ability this belt does is a sweeping wind gains two stack every second it does not deal damage to any enemy. So as you can see here, if I'm gonna pop my sweeping wind as I'm going to do now, it's on three stacks already. And it keeps resetting itself. Now if you don't have this belt on, you need to do damage all the time, otherwise this sweeping wind will run out and you'll lose it and you'll have to spend spirit to popping it again. As long as I'm not doing damage, as long as oh wait, doing damage. As long as I wait one second between popping a wave of light, I should just saw uh, it use a stack, and again, my sweeping strike will always stay on. The braces, which I also need to find an ancient legendary of, is the Pinto's Pride, which pretty much is. Yeah, again, it's always the orange text you're going for. Like, the Wave of Light also slows enemies by 80% for 3 seconds and deals 135% increased damage. The headpiece you should be going for is called the Socrin's Gaze. Now, this is not the best piece of it. Uh, but it increases your wave of light damage by 135%. Now it can go up to 150% increased damage on your wave of light ability. But here's the sm but here's the beautiful thing of it: wave of light is now cast at your enemy. Now, what I what I mean is, if you don't have this headpiece on, I can just throw it down here. Now, I can throw my wave of light there. And I can't throw it any further away than straight on me. Now, w when you're running torment levels, which 
this is pretty much the main goal of this game. That's too close. <laughs> you will die, and I'm also gonna. I'm also dying on T10 already, but because it hurts. However, if you put this piece on, anything that's in your screen, as you can see right now, uh, that's my stairs up there. So if I do this, I can actually throw it up here, keeping myself out of range and without being killed as easily, which is nice. Uh, rings, and of course there's also this. Uh, the amulet should be some Vuku, that's pretty much what you need. The rings is, well, that's the conviction of elements. That's definitely one you should be grinding out for, because as you can see in the orange text, gain 185% increased damage to a single element for 4 seconds. This effect rotates through the elements available to your class. Blah 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 blah. Arcane, cold, fire, holy, lightning, physical, and poison. Now, my wave of light, that's fire because of the rune it gets, so it bursts into fire. So every time you see, you can see it run here, conviction of elements, physical damage increased, cold damage increased. What I need to wait for every time, that one, fire damage increased by 135% on my wave of light. Good God. Again, fuck ton of damage. And uh, the other ring is, well, take your pick, because there's pretty much nothing. There's nothing that you could actually go for. You can use whatever ring you want. I just have this one uh, because I picked it up a couple of days ago, and, well, it was. I suck at it. Well, the, the, the main stats it had was better than the, the, the one I was running with in the first place. And then I suckered it to put one of these gems in, as you can see. I have here uh, these gems, you can see, is well, they drop from when you do a greater rift, as you can see over here, this this obelisk thingy. And there's a regular rift, and there's a greater rift. Greater rift is pretty much a time, yeah, it's a time challenge. It costs a greater rift stone, which you will grind out on the regular rifts and through bounties. It, and that's easy. A regular rift is not a time challenge, it's just a humongous amount of mobs and well if you're lucky you there's a lot of legendaries that's that will be dropped. Uh, one of the new things they act or oh, new things, it's actually quite old now, they introduced into Diablo 3 is this one, can I cube? Kanaish Cube is an ability that makes you extract power from legendaries. As you can see, this one, if I wanted to, if I extracted this power, the power that's when I mean the orange text, I could use that power as a passive ability on this guy right here along. As you can see down here, I got you got one passive ability for your weapons. One for your armor and one for your jewelry. Now, for the weapon, uh, you should go. You should find the Kaiosh the Kaioshiro's blade, which is a new fist weapon for monks. Extract the power from that and equip it down here. Uh, increases the damage of wave by 150%, which is nice. And of course, when you initial impact of your wave of light hits three or fewer enemies, the damage is increased by 250%. That's a Huge damage buff again. This is <laughs> yeah, this build is that's main focus is on that sh big ass bell. Um, for your armor, you should find a legendary chest piece that's called Cinder Coat. It's very recognizable because it's red. Reduces the resource cost of fire skills by 30%. That's your wave of light. Because of course it's fire damage, so it pretty much costs nothing. Otherwise, it would cost you 75 spirit every time you pop it. But now it costs—I have no idea actually. Not even t around 20. Jewelry, and this is what I talked about. Why I only have five set pieces, but I get the the full set bonus of this of this Ruku. You're gonna find you need to grind out a ring that's called Ring of the Royal Grandeur. 
reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by one. Now what that means of course, you need to have at least two uh, set items before it becomes active. Now I can't just put one set item on and then get the first uh, set bonus. Now I need to grind out, need to find three items, then I get the second and the, the first and the second uh, set bonuses and of course when I have five well I got every th six of them so this is pretty much what the build is it's is looks like if you want like yeah but enough chit chat on all that um, let's sh actually show you this build in action and let's see if you can keep up with the damage, cause I'm having I'm having trouble sometimes seeing the amount of damage I'm throwing out. But as you can see here, the damage is well, pretty much, yeah. I don't know why Blizzard did ha haven't nerfed this IS. I'm the one hit wonder. Oh, hello. A treasure goblin. A creature that drops loot. From oh hello. I didn't do it to end of the X, yeah why not? And Nope. Of course, when you're running on T10, uh, the key to survival is actually staying alive as much as you can, because as you can see there, I just took that bomb and it pretty much almost took 50% of my health. And that's a dashing strike. I mean, just oh yeah, I totally forgot. Um, the legendary gems you're going to get is, first of all you're going to get the Bane of the Powerful gem. These gems uh, are is drops in greater rifts by the Rift Guardian. Bane of the Powerful. Gain 20% increased damage for 51 seconds. It, it, it's on now because it's only ranked 21 uh, after killing an elite pack. When it reaches rank 25 I get instant 15% uh, increased damage when I'm fighting elites or Rift Guardians. Then there's also the Bane of the Trapped. Increases damage against enemies under the effects of control impairing effects by 18.6%. That comes into that comes useful when this one pops. Wave of Light slows enemies. That's a control impairing effect. And then because you when you get running ri uh, greater rifts you can run them uh, normal and you can run them on uh, what's it called? Empowered mode. In power mode you need to pay a certain amount of gold. I can show you... I'm just gonna run this rift and then I can show you a greater rift, the time challenge. But the Boon of Horror, it's only rank 45, but there's a 92.5% chance of killing an enemy to cause an explosion of gold. So you need to farm gold as well. But after picking up gold, you inc you, your movement speed is increased by 30% for 2 seconds. And it doesn't matter how much gold you pick up, it can be one gold, it can only be 75 or 75,000 gold, it doesn't matter. Um, as you can see, my movement speed just keeps running. And I'm not going to stay in that. And you're not going to run anywhere, and you're going to stay there. So, but this build is, yeah, it's known as a hybrid build, but the main purpose is taking these rifts as fast as you possibly can and greater rifts as possibly you can. But as you can see this is just re what I would like to say stupid because it really is. Like this amount of damage is just insane. As you can see I'm critting for billions. Now, as you can see, that bar on your right, that's slowly being filled up by a yellow color. That's when that reaches 100%. Uh, 
a Rift Guardian appears. Rift Guardian is pretty much, well, how should you say, the boss of a Rift. Pretty much the end, or not the end boss, because Rift is not done. You know, the Rift is not completely done when you kill the Rift Guardian on a regular Rift. But yeah. So let's see how fast we can I'm not the I'm not the best speed rifter at all. I'm not the best Diablo player at all. And that's something I need to stay out of. That you can see that sentry down there, that, that purple thing that's turning slowly around. That's an arcane sentry. That thing will one shot me. To put it into perspective, I got 566,000 health. That thing will nuke me instantly. There's nothing I can do about it, but if I get touched by that, I'm dead. Oh, another legendary. Uh, kill that. As you can see, Boon of the Hollow works perfectly. Uh, legendary. Pick it up. Kill that. Oh, something up here died as well. But yeah, this <laughs> this build is quite OP. Ah, next level. Uh, let's just kill him and kill that guy. Kill that guy. That guy. Lindor potion or Lindor sword. Nice. Wow, you didn't die? Holy shit. 6 billion, 3 billion, 11 billion, 15 billion. Almost a new record. Of course, as, as my paragon level increases, my character gets stronger every time. So at some point, I'm gonna be able to speed run this much faster, way faster than I'm doing right now. Um, I need to be careful I'm not using, I'm not spamming my wave of light. Because again, I need to wait at least one second before I do damage. So I can get that sweeping wind stack reset. Because I don't want to speed. And tr one second doesn't sound like much, but when you're getting chased by ow, getting chased by a fuck ton of um, monsters, one second can actually s f sometimes feels like a very long time. Sometimes too long. You know what? Stand still. No. Ow. Okay. Wow. Kill everybody in there with a one hit, but that last skill. Nope. Not gonna die first time. Fuck you. And. Now I might seem strong, but uh, I just need to get hit. I just need to fuck up once and I'm dead. Now on a regular rift, that's not much of a, that's not a issue. But when you're doing greater rifts, which is a time challenge, <laughs> that's an issue. Well, to be fair, the first time you die in a great in a greater rift, you don't get a penalty. But then, the second time you die, you are getting a five second penalty, and that one increases every time you die, and to a maximum of thirty seconds. Yeah, you need to wait 30 seconds before you can rest at the end. 30 seconds on a time challenged, uh, on a t yeah, on a challenge that's that's time based. No, that's pretty much that's painful. Oh, what's that? Speeds, yeah, and that's the rift guide, as you can see right there. Now, let's see if I can get my fire. Whoa, that was close. Fire? Nope. It should be popping after that one. 
Yep, there it is. And ow, yeah. As I, t <laughs> as I said, I'm not invincible. Invincible. Uh, I need to buff this up. Wait one second to, to get to stack the three. There we go. And stand still, will you? I lovely having these minions tanking for me. So oh, and die already. As you can see, there they are. Those you need for the greater rift. Fuck off. Let's take everything we need. Mats, so on, so on, so on. All that gold. All right. I'm not gonna do every. I'm not gonna do the rest of the of the rift because rift. A rift level can can be from one level to all the way up to. I think the highest amount I've seen was seven levels. That's gonna take a while. Event complete, XP received, 100 and... yeah, as you can see. This is why people do rifts. It's rewarding. And let's see what type of, of legendaries I got. Uh, crap. 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 Um, let's wait, come on, close that rift. I'm gonna showcase you a greater rift. How that one looks, where you can't afford to die. Oh, yeah, level 52, let's take level 49. If you complete a greater rift before the time runs out, a spirit will appear and you can upgrade these legendary gems. If you run it on, if you don't run it on empowered, you can upgrade a gem three times. Run it on empowered mode, you can upgrade it four times. But of course, as you can see here, when I select empowered, I need to pay 45,300,000 to start the rift. That's why I'm running with Boon of the Horde because I need to make I need to equal that profit loss, but let's go. That's 45 million straight down the drain. Popping the rift, sweeping wind and here we go. Oops, wrong way. Now, this is a time challenge, so, and of course, sm regularly trash maps doesn't reward you as much as legendary uh, or elites and rares, so you need to find groups of those and just kill them as fast as you can. And you need to fuck off, and you guys need to die, but apparently you won't. Paragon level 480, yay, me. Man, kill those. As you can see on a greater rift, that no loot is dropped because you don't have time. You can't spend time of running around and looting everything. The only thing that's gonna drop something are elites. They're gonna drop something that increases or boosts your progress. That's it. Um, other than that, it's only the rift guardian that drops something that drops loot and the difference between a regular oh there we go oh arcade sentry uh, the difference between a regular rift and a greater rift is that when you kill the rift guardian on a greater rift the rift is done there's no more monsters regular rift you can keep on going no and you can see, th this is my epiphany mode. This is how I look when I'm in my epiphany. Oh, conduct. Which is just, well, as you can see, lightning. Wrong way. Pay attention. Go to bed, bacon. You're tired and drunk. Now. I need to... F can I find a group somewhere? Should be... Oh, there we go. Oh, shit, that hurts. die. You can see those purple, uh, I would say, skulls. Those are the ones that boosts my my progress. Let's see if we can... Yep. Screw this trash. It's not rewarding enough. Um, goodbye. I don't 
why I killed that guy. Didn't need to, but... Oh, shit. Cops explosion. Cops explosion! Stay awake. Dash through that. And keep on going. Uh, you know what? Ah, oh, shit, man. Ah, come on. Sweeping windows down. There we go. I need that increased damage. Oh, that was close. No! Damn it. Alright, I can't die again, then I'm get, getting a five second penalty. So, up here. Well, from the th ashes into the fire. Yeah. Oh, come on, really? Now, let's. Yep, five seconds. Uh, the drawback of glass can spec built. There we go, epiphany up. Uh, why couldn't I? Never mind. Now, if this game seems interesting to you, um, I would recommend it that you take the storyline first. Take the story, not the normal mode, as it's called, and get the storyline out. Because if there's something Blizzard can do, they can make a good story. Uh, gotta give the gotta give credit to the oh god, oh, that hurt. Ten seconds. Time left. I need to play more cautious. Wow. Ah, oh, really? There we go. I need to get my epiphany up so I can get my s spirit regen up. There we go. Paragon level 491. Move one second. Drop it again. Oops, that was two. Ow! Thunderstorm. No, you're not going to chip more. Well, okay, then you are. God damn, how much health do you have? Nope. Oh, that was nice. Power pylon increases damage by... What is this? Oh, okay. It doesn't say, but it's a lot. On some hand. As you can see, now I'm creating for 13 billion. There we go. Rift Guardian is here. And I got the power pylon on. Why is it? Took him out in two hits. That's the loot a, a rift guardian drops from, yeah, a greater rift. So I'm just gonna take whatever I need. That's a legendary. That's a set item. This is the spirit I'm talking about. As you can see, I got a lot of gems. So uh, that's a 60% chance that this is gonna get upgraded. So I'm not gonna use that. Bane of the Powerful. That's a 200%. So upgrade it. Still on 100%. Still on 100%. Nice. Oh, can I get it into rank 24? Oh, yes, I can. Bang. Increases damage against elites by 15%. Nice. That effect is now active. Now, let's just get the rest of it. Thank you very much. Uh, get these paragon levels set. And back to town. Go down to this auric guy. Uh, 
time there we go greater rift completed rewarded 15 million gold so it's still a 30 million gold loss by running a greater rift unempowered and compared to what you're getting but then again of course you're getting 425 million xp But this is yeah. This is this is what people are doing in Diablo 3, and I'm also doing it as much as I possibly can. And yeah, I am doing a lot of it. Uh, those ancients. Huh. Wait a minute. Nope. Yeah, that one is better. But yeah. Um, <laughs> this is pretty much what I've been doing. That's why my channel's been quiet for such a long time. <sighs> I didn't, and to be honest, I really need to start looking at those replays for my 100 subscriber comp comp uh, competition giveaway. The gifts have already been sent, but yeah, got the old version of World of Tanks and just need to get it installed and see if those replays would actually work. Anyway, I don't know if you enjoyed it, but I gambled, so thanks for watching guys, and take care to you all.